My name is Dieter Scholz. I'm a professor here at Hamburg University of Applied Sciences, and my duties are teaching in aircraft design, which is the topic here, um, flight mechanics, flight dynamics, uh, which also includes educational flight testing and aircraft systems. As a child, I already started uh, uh, going to Hamburg Airport to see the airplanes taking off and landing. Later I joined Airbus. Uh, and one reason to join Airbus was certainly also that they have a flying club and there was a possibility to get a pilot license and that was the fascination and that all started. I mean, I came from a mechanical engineering background uh, which leads to aircraft systems, the mechanical uh, systems that a uh, mechanical engineer will design for an aircraft. But my interest developed more and more into the direction of aeronautical engineering. I wanted to know why an aircraft flies and why it looks like the way it does. And I think this fascination uh, that many people share about uh, flying, aviation, comes from this archaic question or desire to conquer the air. I mean, as human beings, we live on the earth, on the ground. And we, to a certain extent, are able as humans also to cope with water. But the air was always unreachable. People looking up, seeing the birds fly, and they always wanted to fly. And finally, they achieved. And this is this fascination which is deep in us. And uh, that's also why um, we get students easily, because there's this fascination and students want to learn this. Aircraft design is about uh, getting the first idea of the shape of an airplane. Aircraft design starts from requirements, which is uh, in civil aviation what we do. How many passengers uh, should be transported and how far should they go? So a little bit formal, uh, we would say payload and range. Then we obviously also have to look at uh, certification requirements and starting from all these requirements, uh, we put things together that in the end we have the shape of an airplane which is expressed in a three-view drawing. Aircraft design and uh, aviation uh, is relevant um, because we see globalization means that we network more and more. We do much through the internet but it's still very important that people see each other and certainly uh, what you cannot do through the internet, goods have to be transported. So we see passenger transport and freight transport are of much importance today and uh, this is why aircraft design is important. We need the airplanes. In the old days it was such that you strive to go uh, faster longer range and maybe flying higher, but that changed. Today we talk about economics. Uh, we have to deliver the transport as low as possible costs. And um, uh, the ecology is important. We need to save fuel and we want to make it also very comfortable for the people flying. We start from requirements, we go to preliminary sizing, then to conceptual design. And what we don't do in this uh, teaching sequence here, really what we want to do in the end, we want to optimize the airplane. Obviously, you need to fulfill requirements, but this is not the best airplane. Uh, the airplane that makes it uh, as a successful airplane in the end is one which is just the best of. Uh, what you can achieve in this framework of requirements. And for me, it is uh, to a certain extent an evolution. Yeah, you can really compare it with the biological uh, evolution where um, airplanes change, uh, their design changes over the decades, and in the end, it's the survival of the fittest. Yeah? Now, uh, it may look complicated to design an airplane, but um, it is not so complicated. On the one hand, it is true, uh, aircraft design is at 
many universities seen as what's called the capstone course. You start with mathematics and then you go to structures, flight mechanics, and then aircraft design comes at the very end uh, because it brings all these disciplines together. And then people may think, if this brings all the disciplines together, then it must be the most difficult of all. But that's not the case, huh? because in the end, it's simple uh, mathematics. Um, it's based on rule of thumbs. It's based on statistics. It's based on expert knowledge. And these things have to be brought together. So mathematically, it's really not complicated. And if we take the students, the learners at the hand and take them step by step, through our uh, teaching sequence, they will surely make it. First of all, certainly I have the university students at, in my mind, uh, those that I, I teach and uh, those in other parts of the world. I've taken the teaching resource already around the world, I can say. Um, but beyond that, there is also the interested public. As we said, there is much of fascination uh, that springs from aviation and there are people out there who do something else, but they really appreciate aviation aircraft design. They want to learn something and I think they will go through the internet and find this and hopefully they find it useful. Uh, on top of all that, there are also uh, the engineers, the experts in industry. Um, we see that so many topics exist and everyone is an expert in its own domain. Um, aircraft design is um, at the very beginning of the whole process and not everyone in industry is allowed to work on this. It's one specialized department. So um, aviation experts may also have the desire to learn a little bit more about that domain that all starts the process and it's also very useful because in aircraft design all the parameters come together and we have to deliver an airplane that is optimum that means uh, aircraft design is kind of uh, mediating between all the interests from the specialized departments and therefore it's very good uh, to know aircraft design principles because then we are not fighting that much uh, against each other one department against the other but we see that we have to reach the common goal of aircraft optimization and aircraft design helps to achieve that. Um, yes, after this teaching sequence I hope that um, the person has learned how to design an airplane. I mean it's uh, obviously standard aircraft uh, fuselage uh, tail in the back, yeah, what we call tail aft configuration. Um, the teaching is not going in all detail to unconventional configurations. But sometimes I'm joking and I say, Christmas is coming up and you go home and then your grandmother asks you, are you now able to design an airplane? And then you student can rightly say, yes, grandma, I can. I can design an airplane. And that's what we achieved through this. As I said, I'm fascinated myself by aircraft design, aviation, and I know there are people out there who share this fascination. And if I reach out to them a little bit, and maybe they come back uh, with an email question or so, and uh, we get into a little conversation, and I see that I can help people to understand this topic more, then everything is reached what I would wish to reach with it.